really happy to introduce you to our speakers and to our session, Shaping Digital Transformation Through International Cooperation. And because we just have 30 minutes, I don't want to lose any time and want to immediately hand over to our speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen with you. So, oh, fingers crossed, everything works. So you have uh, the full screen mode. You see my presentation in full screen? I would say yes. Perfect. OK, yes. great, great. Thank you. And uh, so basically, uh, we come together uh, for the University Future Festival through a project, which is called Digitalization uh, uh, DGO Gov. Uh, digitalization means university governance. Uh, we want to give an input um, to combine the topics diversity and digital transformation in the universities uh, together. So before we start, um, I would like to give some food for thoughts about the diversity in general. Uh, for example, you see we have so many languages actually uh, between, uh, uh, between 6,000 to 7,000 languages spoken in the world. And we have so many different religions in the world in so many countries. But broken down into the project, it means that we have connected universities from Colombia, Germany, Mexico, and Spain, and our participants, and some of them are on stage, on a virtual stage today for the festival, are from Bogota, Bucaramanga, Caritas Cali, Marisales. I am personally from Potsdam and uh, from University of Cologne, Guadalajara, Monterrey, and Spain. <laughs> so you see uh, the topic diversity is everywhere, not only in the project content, but in the project uh, consortium. So uh, from my side, I'm the policy advisor at the chancellor's office at the University of Potsdam. Uh, we uh, have another project member. Uh, she is not able to connect, but she is a professor at the department at the Universidad de Guadalajara. And uh, another speaker uh, connecting from Italy today, leader for gender and diversity office at the University of Potsdam. Another colleague uh, from Universidad de Caritas, Colombia. She's actually the chief in, uh, international affair uh, office. And we also have a speaker today, actually sit right beside me, <laughs> Virginia uh, Venoles. She is a researcher uh, at the Jaume Premier uh, Universidad from Spain. So today, we will quickly uh, go through what it's about uh, in the project, and, and then I'll hand it over uh, the word to our colleague, my colleague at the University of Potsdam, talking about diversity and how to integrate diversity as a cross-cutting topic in the project. And um, also, we are bringing several best practices and very concrete tools uh, generated from the project for you as a take-home messages, for example, how to organize diversity workshop and how to do collaboration in a project. And also, uh, uh, we would like to share a self-assessment tool on digital competences with you. But uh, let's begin with the project. So welcome again to uh, DGUGov. Uh, like I said, it means digitalization means university governance. We are talking about building digital competences, not only for the academic stuff, but also from uh, for the administrative stuff at the universities. Um, and beyond this partnership, we want to establish something sustainable. So you see, basically, you know, everybody know a project begins uh, for our side, uh, at the beginning of 2023, it will end soon in the January, in the January of uh, 2025. But how to disseminate the results so that they can be uh, resilient and sustainable, that's also a topic we are considering during the project. So based on that, we've identified six work packages. Uh, the coordinating one, uh, actually, where I'm in with my colleague uh, is the work package one, project management. And we have a pa work package dedicated to digital competences for the academic staff in work package two. 
And work package three, it's about some measures and joint actions for digitalization in the university administration. We're talking about best practices from uh, the co project consortium um, and also like a matching event um, for the administrative staff. So put all the things together. <laughs> we have the work package for governance and consultancy. It's about identify the digital uh, experts uh, overseas and also in Germany and in Spain. So gather experiences and, and also analyze the policies on digital transformation uh, with a whole institutional approach. And then we have work package five about sharing the resources like i said it's not only about conducting courses not al only about producing but also sharing uh, via platform and also uh, sharing with the networks that's why we also have work package six we've identified overseas several networks um, we will be connected with them not only uh, about uh, leading a pro how to lead a, this kind of international project, but also about sharing resources and uh, disseminate the tools we've uh, developed. So all of these <laughs> in a very short uh, introduction, but you will see there's only one topic or there is one topic <laughs> going through all the work packages which is diversity. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I was just short. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Hear you. Okay. Um, so diversity um, was um, yeah something which was cross-cutting in all of the work packages. And um, yeah, we, we, we needed, you see in the beginning, who is in the project, um, which challenges are coming with these different people over the um, borders to organize, first of all, what does it mean if we are speaking about diversity? So for us, um, we had three focus in the beginning. So we needed to make a framework, like um, what does it mean if uh, you promote digitalization and higher education, um, which diversity topics are actually relevant? Um, what is the understanding um, of diversity, which laws we have in the um, different countries and um, how we can make the design of the project that um, we can yeah, see all of the different cultural and institutional backgrounds, um, who is in the group, which language we are speaking um, yeah, and what's actually our aim. So we start to talk about intercultural communication. It means like how um, communication uh, affects also our project activities and our collaborations um, and what is also challenging us, especially in this kind of international projects over the different universities with these different um, target groups. And um, yeah, we we also need to um, talk about our own awareness. So who we are, what is our position um, from where we come and how we can bring this um, background, actually this also personal background within the project. Um, so the aim of course, is also to have a cultural change. So um, we need to prevent gender biases um, in specific selection process, processes and digitalization processes. Um, we talked also about sexism and racism, um, which also need to yeah, define actually, and also how we can promote then all of this knowledge in the teaching of students in the administrative um, uh, yeah, administrative area and um, yeah, what we need actually to um, also empower ourselves. Can you continue with the next slide? Thank you. So um, yes, we first need to have a common understanding, as I said, um, in within our um, hall and we are a big project group actually, like what we understand when we talk about diversity and which dimensions actually are relevant. So you can see on the right side that um, we worked in the first workshop on it, what um, 
diversity mean for us? So it's about um, the dimension age, gender, race, religion, family, also language, um, health issues, also everything um, around inclus inclusiveness in the university. So we check together what is um, relevant for us in our institutions. And I have to say, we were also surprised that not every dimension was the same relevant in every country and in every university. So for example, um, in um, in the Colombian universities, it was um, interesting to talk about family issues and also about how to integrate people with health issues or indigenous people. In Germany, we are much more talking about gender, about gender identity, um, and also about race, actually, about racistic attributions and discrimination. So we checked then in the first workshop, like the laws and the regulations, we um, checked what is the um, what the universities have already for guidelines, and um, which needs and obstacles are uh, combined with this. So which problems actually we have? Um, then then we checked our own privileges and our power positions. So we look to it how we are working, how we are working in projects, which privileges I have. Um, yeah, and slowly we moved on to have actually some understanding of diversity um, and then looked in our work packages and checked it within every work packages how we can um, how we can think all of these dimensions, for example, gender, age, um, or language, uh, when we are creating um, our projects. And on the next slide, um, I bring some, uh, yeah, some key elements which we found out, which are important for us for a good diversity policy in the future when we are talking about um, digitalization processes. So this is. You need to have a good legal framework and um, also voluntary commitment at the university from top down for all of these issues like gender equality, diversity, inclusiveness and anti-discrimination. Um, you need um, more structures to compensating for disadvantages. <clears throat> like guidelines, um, you need like barrier free buildings, entrances, open accesses. Um, you need for sure mandatory courses on intercultural competence for um, what we did actually, you need also in every process like to talk about the competences you need for intercultural communication for especially if you have projects with the international mobility for teachers, for students, for researchers. Um, yes, we also checked um, ra racism, like focus on racistic attribution, um, and we also said every university in every country has to have its own focus. Um, so this is also important. And then having also contacts and advice centers um, if um, you have a problem, actually. So diversity is nice. It's like a colorful, nice promoting um, moment. But you also need to have structures. If you have more people which are really diverse, you need um, anti-discrimination on the other side to also um, make them feel good, like well-being on the university. Yes, and in the end, of course, family, child care services are always necessary um, for every uh, for every project. And we also talked in the end, like there are still areas where women are underrepresented, and we need to promote more female, um, more female, especially in IT, math, and natural science, and especially in digitalization processes. Um, so we were we had a good gender balance in our project, but um, yes, this is not always the case. So I hope I could give you a really short overview about this best practice and I will give the word now. Happy welcome to Margarita. Margarita, nice that you are there. So I give the word to you. Thank you very much. I made it. Okay. Um, this amazing project, uh, this amazing Erasmus project, give us an opportunity for collaboration. Collaboration, why? You see, we have four different countries. We have Colombia, Mexico in Latin America, we have Germany and Spain in Europe, and we also have all these institutions, all these universities working together 
and, and the, our main project is to improve the digital teaching and management among higher education institutions through an international, international cooperation. So the amazing thing is that we all collaborate, we have different points of view, and in order to achieve this, we jointly promote digitalization in our institution we have to have mutual understandings and preconditions. We have we need a framework and laws essential for the project design and implementation processes. Since different cultural and institutional backgrounds, status groups, and languages lead to different understanding approaches and, and viewpoints. We need to agree. We need to know what we have to do. We need to uh, all we need to benefit, and we are all very very different. So. This has to do a lot with what Christina was saying. We need to respect each other. We are very diverse and we learn a lot from our culture. So it's not only working on digitalization, but learning about us, our institution, our people, our countries. Um, the next one, please. Uh, so we do actions together to improve our institutional uh, support for staff and teachers in digital formats. We want digital formats. We also uh, do exchange of resources and digitalization in administration. We have developed some activities and we have others to do uh, still, but more or less, so you have an idea what we do. Uh, we have had matching events for interested teachers, professors, researchers. We get together the different offices in the administration, for example, the marketing offices, the international relations area. We share our best practices and then we get together to see what we can implement in our institutions. We have great ideas that can be implemented in Germany and Spain has great ideas that we can implement in our universities. So we also do exchange of experiences with collaborative online international learning. We are connecting cultures. We are connecting professors, connecting students through virtually uh, developing COIL courses. We have also developed an evaluation instrument for this course. We need to uh, evaluate and see if it's really working, if what is going on and how we do COIL in different uh, institutions. Uh, we also think about doing think tanks about future of digital higher education formats with different status groups, we take into account professors, researchers, students, and administrators. Uh, we also develop and con conduct and evaluate, train the trainers, offers on digital competence. We need to train others. We need to take advantage of those that know more or have more experience. And we just uh, develop an, uh, these training courses so we can learn from each other and improve digitalization within our universities. Also, we have uh, connect networks for digitalization. We, we identify and connect different networks from all over the world. We generate spaces for dialogue. We talk about this, we connect, and also uh, we prepare a rector conferences to share all this information. Now I will give the word to uh, my friend Virginia. Thank you very much. Thanks, Margarita. Um, as as um, Margarita was saying, one of the um, main aspects in this digital transformation process is um, the development of the digital competence of the academics. And I'm going to share with you one of the tools that we designed to promote the digital competence in our academic staff. Um, we, for this project, we uh, developed a self-assessment questionnaire based on the Digital Medo framework. Um, this, this framework aims to uh, explain and define the digital competence for educators. If you're not familiar with it, I invite you to, to get familiar. Um, and for designing this self-assessment questionnaire, we first uh, did like an initial validation in our university, Universidad Jaume I with about 600 participants and in a second phase we did like an international validation to have some insight from other contexts including seven universities from five different countries spain poland germany portugal and italy with also about 600 participants and i mentioned this because this is a um, scientific validated tool and in the last stage we did like an internal validation with the DGUGO partners to make sure that the wording and, and the question were adapted to all the context. 
the different uh, countries and, and universities. And when we get the final version, we design an online tool and you can check uh, and you can check the with the QR code here you can you can check the you can access the, the tool it's in english and in spanish so why to uh, i'm sorry can you can you uh, uh, the, the, to move there yes thank you so why why we uh, should uh, use as uh, a tool like this so I would like to share some of the benefits that this tool could uh, have for the institutions. Uh, in in our case, for the for the partner institutions, the um, counting with a common uh, framework, as the, the digital medal framework, could be useful to have a common understanding of what the digital competence are, and to share the same language when we're talking to the different stakeholders, to teachers to students, so it's easy and helps to promote the, the communication and the strategy. And also to count with a validated tool, as I said, it's a scientific validated tool could, uh, that we could offer to, to our academics and also would help us to have some insight, uh, like a big picture on, on, of how the digital competence level of our academy uh, is and our institution and um, get some information to make decisions on training, on different strategies that we would like to implement to improve the, the digital competence of, the, of our academics. And also to have this international perspective, since it's a, a tool that we are sharing with, with the different institutions, help us to maybe to share experiences and to compare um, and also to, to improve the, the digital competence of our, our teachers. And for the academics, what are the benefits? Uh, first of all, understanding what the teaching digital competence is. If you go through the questionnaire, you will see the framework and it's dif in different areas and sub competences. So you can be familiar with uh, what is expected for you as a teacher uh, in terms of, of the digital competence, what are the options that you have, and also help you or help the teachers to reflect on how they are integrating the, the technology in their teaching, specifically uh, in the pedagogic aspect that um, uh, not only um, the technical but also the, the pedagogical and also shows you where where you are but where you could be. So it's like a, a inspiring for teachers to, to um, identify some areas to develop, and to uh, also to decide if they want to train in in, in any specific area, they could uh, um, help. Uh, it would help them to to choose their personal learning paths. And just uh, to finish, um, we are focusing in, in this tool. We are focusing in three steps. The first one, as I said, is a self-assessment that could help the teachers to identify, okay, uh, this area I'm okay, this area I could work on, because we are not starting from zero. So uh, we also want to uh, know and understand what are our strengths, but also what areas we could develop. So as a second step, the teachers could access to some training resources on uh, the different areas of the of the framework and um, the last is the we offer innovative practices so um, some teachers are of are sharing their their innovative the innovations that they did on the on the classes and you can check the the, the different experiences and get inspired from it so um, that's it uh, i give the floor back to Cindy. thank you yeah, thank you very much. And I also uh, have noticed that uh, there is a, a chat uh, a message. The questionnaire has been filled already <laughs> from a professor in the chat. And uh, yeah, and I think I can say it for all of the uh, uh, participants members in the project consortium. We think that DGU Gov 
uh, itself is a good practice of collaboration and diversity. And I totally agree uh, with the speakers, our speakers, especially what Margarita was uh, saying, uh, if you are organizing one thing for the whole consortium, there are several challenges. So diversity is uh, bringing some complementary part uh, of the project results, but also uh, there are some details like semester times, if you are coordinating one thing, or languages. These are all challenges that we have to conquer <laughs> now within the two years. Well, at the, the moment, we are in the middle of the path. Um, but there are also like uh, dissemination events uh, like this uh, coming. And one of our tasks is also to develop a website for disseminate the results and sharing the results. So in this slide, you can see the QR code for our website. It's basically <laughs> digiugov.com and you can check other tools and also measures we've conducted uh, throughout uh, the project frame. And I think that's it for our input, but uh, I've also got notice from the organizational team. If you want to have a connection with us face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, you can go to the networking table. There is a screenshot on the right side. You can see uh, Let's React Tissue networking table on the right side uh, below. So that's it. <laughs> I'll stop the screen sharing. So I can see other faces. Thank you very much. And thank you so much to all of you from the University Future team.